All right. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Alex from X Trades back to you with another weekly trade ideas list. Hope everybody had a wonderful trading week last week. Last week, we had some put setups on the list, and honestly, I didn't really get a good trigger on any of them. So I actually had to find some other stuff. I ended up calling out DAL puts in the chat. And the only thing that actually worked that we went over in the video was the Chinese longs that, you know, I kind of just mentioned by name. We didn't go over any of the charts, but I just had mentioned Baba and JD. Those did pretty good, but the put setups, market was very bullish. So Shop, Facebook, and Oracle did not end up triggering really any short setup on the one day chart. So I'm hoping this week will be a little bit better and maybe I'll be able to trade the setups that we go over this week because last week I didn't get to trade any of them. I suppose on Monday you could have shorted the gap up on meta because it ended up dumping pretty good, but I was waiting for the trend line to break and that never broke. So ended up going higher. So Bulls got a really nice run on that. This week I have a little bit of a mix, so we'll go over those. But first, let's go into the economic calendar. Uh, we have a, actually have a really quiet week this week for data. Last week was kind of the was pretty much our big show, right? And that's over now. And now we're kind of going into more calm data sets. So Monday is the Empire State Manufacturing Survey. I don't really think this is going to move the market that much. Tuesday, the U.S. retail sales definitely has potential to move the market, and maybe the business inventories, and also the Home Builder Confidence Index. Those can definitely move the market. It honestly just depends on how extreme the reading is. And then Thursday, uh, just our regular initial jobless claims. A lot of people have been paying attention to that more recently to see if the labor market has any changes coming up or see if we can, you know, start seeing, you know, an uptick in unemployment and all that good stuff. So we know, you know, the Fed tightening is working. And then 8.30, the Philadelphia Fed Manufacturing Survey. This can definitely move the market. And then most importantly, I would say this day, the existing home sales. I've seen this move the market pretty good. Give a little insight into the real estate market. So this can definitely move the market. Like, But I mean, it just depends, you know. It depends on how extreme the reading is and how people are feeling that day. And then Friday, nothing scheduled. So a very quiet week this week. I would argue that Probably the retail sales is the most important, and that's really about it. I mean, the others have potential, but I would say retail sales definitely would, you know, have the most potential to move the market. All right, now we'll go ahead and get into the setups. So we do have a mix this week. So I have a couple longs, but also a couple shorts to look at, just because there's a couple things hitting resistance, but there's also a couple names that I personally like that look good to the upside. It honestly just depends, but our first one here, Coca-Cola, ticker symbol KO. You can see there's a very short-term breakout. They do have earnings coming up, so this could get a nice pre-earnings run-up. But this breakout does look pretty bullish. You also have the slow stochastic here crossing to the upside. So I had a nice little run off this demand zone I have marked. There's a resistance at 61.10, and then there's another peak at about 62.17. So these are the two areas I'd probably look for resistance if it continues higher. We really need to see KO get over this 61.10, make a base off that, and then maybe go up to 62s. And that's pretty much as far as I could put it for right now. I honestly don't know if it would get up to 62 before earnings, but it, it's definitely a possibility. I mean, it's not too much of a move, but um, it is a pretty decent move if it got up there. So KO here looking good for calls. Look, nice little short-term setup that maybe could be setting up before earnings. I personally wouldn't hold through the earnings report unless you're just a long-term investor or plan on holding shares. Holding options through earnings is a little bit riskier. So unless you don't have a safe expiration date or you, you, know, you don't have pretty much a smaller position size, I wouldn't, you know, trade options into earnings. It's just very risky. So, I mean, some people like that kind of stuff, the high risk stuff, but I like to conserve capital. So I just make sure I don't swing any options through earnings usually, but I you know occasionally, you know, I might, you know, get some motivation to hold through earnings, but honestly, it would just depend and the setup would need to be really good. So KO here, looking at calls. All right. And next we're going into AT&T. So this is ticker symbol T. And I've been seeing this one on Twitter a lot more recently and also saw it on Reddit for a brief second. People starting to talk about it just because it's trading so cheap right now. I think the P.E. ratio is sitting at about four, which is way below the S&P average. If we go ahead and take the indicators off here, you can see we do have a crazy, crazy support all the way from what is that? early 2000s right here. So this support is I mean, it's pretty huge and this is the lowest it's been in a really long time. They do pay a very high 
percent yield, about seven percent. So I'd say that's you know pretty decent dividend yield. I, I believe they pay quarterly. So this is actually more of a long term investment trade. You could maybe look at a swing trade on options on this as well. But I'm really eyeing this big support, and I feel like even if it broke. There's pretty good uh, a chance that it could bounce back up just because it's so low and the P.E. ratio is so low. I feel like the support could still hold, but this general area from 14 to 12, I feel like it would, it would probably hold up pretty good just because this is, I mean, this is just ridiculously low, guys. And the only reason why I would say it's been trending down so low is probably because of their debt. They do have a lot of debt. And with interest rates up, obviously, that makes their debt more expensive. So that's one risk when it comes to investing in AT&T long term, their debt. But otherwise, as long as they're still paying a dividend, I really like this setup. And I feel like this would be a good long term hold. So I'm looking at adding this one into the long term. I've been trying to throw a couple, you know, long term investments out for people in the chat and also in these videos. The last one I put out was UAA. So I actually am long Under Armour right now at about, I think, 713 a share. So we have a nice little cushion. I think it ran up 12% already, but I haven't sold yet. I'm going to hold through their earnings and all that stuff just because it's shares. So I feel a little bit safer doing that. And I'm looking for like 10 plus. It's a long-term investment. So same game plan with T here. As long as you're paying a dividend, I'll continue to hold the shares. But I'm probably going to look to buy this on Monday or Tuesday. I want to see if it's going to hold up this 1423 support. So as long as this is holding up maybe into you know Friday or so next Friday and you know the one week bar or the one month bar uh, at the end of, end of July is holding the support I'd feel really good about it you know holding and bouncing back up and ideally first price target obviously on the one month is probably going to be like 20 flat or so looks like there's a little cluster right here if you add at 20 flat or so you got support resistance just overall area of confluence so if it's able to hold up that area to be a pretty good setup like i said this is a long-term investment if you want to look at longer term options maybe three or four or five six seven months out get a nice good expiration just because there's still a little bit of downside risk right i mean people are selling this it's been in a downtrend since uh, 2016 if you look at the monthly chart all the way from up here lower highs lower highs lower highs lower lows etc so you do have to be careful with this one and then keep in mind they're high debt and it, you know it may take rates coming back down for this to start bouncing and you know as long as debt gets cheaper you know that eventually this could bounce and i feel like as long as they're holding their dividend up people are still going to buy it so as long as they're safe with that and they're not slashing their dividend or completely cutting it out uh, if they did you'd probably need to cut it and you know reevaluate maybe find something else because I would say that this dividend is probably the one thing holding them up. And even with the dividend, it's still selling off pretty good. So you do have to be careful with that. So T here, looking at a long-term investment for shares, but also you could look at calls. All right. And now we're going to go ahead and get into a couple of shorts and obviously they're tech. So uh, you are kind of going a little bit counter trend here. So you do have to be careful, wait for the right signals. It's the same thing as last week. We had all tech for puts on watch and none of them gave a good trigger so i didn't enter any of them and i didn't alert any of them either unfortunately i really wanted to trade them but i just didn't get those triggers so this is going to be the same thing this week if i don't get the triggers i'm obviously not going to take these but adobe here you can see it's at this what is that 518.74 so it's a pretty good resistance from what is that june 16th you can see the resistance right here so it's pretty good um i had a pretty hard rejection here all the way from up here filled the gap down and had a slight sell off nothing crazy and then it's got a little structure hold up you know about right here so it's got a little structure hold up there at about 472 or so obviously still trending over the one day nine ema so it's still in an uptrend one thing you do have going for you other than the resistance to the downside is that you can see the slow stochastic here is crossing down so it's kind of similar to a kdj oscillator just a little bit slower and it kind of lags a little bit more but it kind of lags out those false signals that a kdj can give and it's kind of like a macd as well you're just looking for crossovers you're looking for a trend with the slow stochastic up here so you can see when it crossed up really nice upside uh had a little cross down here but it, it just fell into consolidation so this cross down did not pay uh this cross down right here on the slow stochastic did pay so you got a crossover after this red bar and it sold off for a couple of days nothing crazy but you see the gist of it you're using the crossovers kind of to get a trend read and maybe find a reversal but what we want to do we don't want to just use indicators and we don't want to just use resistance we also want to use price points 
So let's go ahead and use Friday's low as a trigger point. If we can get under Friday's low at 1512 67 on Monday, that could be a good short term put trade. So we'll go ahead and add an alert and we'll name it breakdown. So now that we got the alert at Friday's low, we can go ahead and just wait for that to trigger. I set some alerts last week as well on Shop Oracle and Meta. They kind of triggered, but there was only one 15 minute bar or so below it. So it really wasn't good triggers, but the alerts did go off, but you just have to be careful uh, when setting alerts, you, you don't want to just enter on the first candle breakdown. You want to, you know, see nice selling. You want to see a holding below it. And also you want to see follow through. So if you don't get the follow through, that's not a good signal. And we saw that last week. I mean, shop Oracle and meta all, all the put triggers did go off because price did go below our price points and alert setups. So once it went below the alert setup on the 15 minute or a five minute or a one minute, the first time that price gets one penny under the alert, it's going to go off. So you can get false signals, but you do want to pay attention to the 15 minute candles and the 30 minute candles, maybe even a one hour candle. Uh, if you can get a one hour candle close below Friday's low or a 30 minute bar below Friday's low, that's a good trigger. And we'd want to hold that same standard with the alerts that we had last week, you know, shop meta and Oracle, which didn't work out. You want to be looking at those 30 minute bars, the 15 minute bars, make sure they're really closing under that and make sure they're staying under that. Cause if they pop back over after closing under, you know, that may, you may want to get back out. So you just got to be careful with that. So make sure that we're staying under 15, 12, 67, if the alert goes off and we do get under Friday's low, and that'll give you maybe a good put trade down to the nine EMA right here and that'd probably be you know about 501 or so something like that it might take a couple of days could take one day so we'll have to see a lot of times on friday if the day is red you'll get some continuation on monday uh, same thing with the indexes if spire qqq were to close like super super red mondays will follow through and then usually you know it'll get bought back up by tuesday so it's kind of the they call it the weekend effect or maybe the Monday effect. And uh, it's just a continuation play that, you know, the market will continue its trend from Friday. So maybe we'll see that on Adobe. But like I said, we do want to get under 512.67. We set that alert, make sure a 30 minute bar gets under it tomorrow, closes under it. And that could be a good trigger. If you're brave enough, you could just take it at the first break on a five or 15 minute candle, but that's up to you. You do have to be careful though. So just make sure you, you know, you're managing your risk correctly. So Adobe here looking at puts as long as we get our trigger. All right, next we're going into MU. So this one actually could be a call or put trade right now it's rejecting. So I'm going to assume that it could go lower just because it closed under the downtrend line. You got to test one, you got to test two, you got to test three, you got to test four. Also, we closed under the 21 EMA on the one day. So these dots right here are the 21 EMA. That could be, you know, showing that we're still making, you know, lower highs, lower lows. It just depends. What I did though, even though I feel like this could go a little bit lower, I did also right click and I uh, add an alert on the trend line in case it wants to break out. I didn't name it, but I'll name it right now. We'll just name it breakout in case it does want to switch. And that way, if, you know, it does want to break out later, this is a great long setup because if it can break out, obviously that could take you up to, this resistance right here is 67.95. You could call it roughly just 68 flat if you wanted to. And that's the resistance right there. And that's from pre earnings last time. If we can get under Friday's low, which is a usually a good trigger point, you want to use Friday's low going into the next week. If it can break under that Monday, it's usually a pretty good signal. But like I said, you want to be using the 15 minute or the 30 minute for good confirmation. If you're just scalping, you know, you can use the five minute if you want, as long as it's closing under Friday's low with the bar, it could be a good signal, but you do want to see that follow through. So you just got to be careful with it. So we'll go ahead and add an alert. We'll just call it Friday's low and that'll be our trigger. So if we can get under Friday's low, uh, that'd be a good put trade to the downside. And then obviously the price target, you got two buy imbalance candles here that can fill up pretty easily to the downside if it breaks. And then there's a demand zone right here at 61.43 down to 60.63 at its low. You can see these blue marks. That's the demand zone we just marked. You know, if it can get under Friday's low, you probably see about there. And I try to probably curl up about there. Uh, it just depends. But like I said, right now it's still rejecting the downtrend line. So you might want to, you know, shift your focus to your downside or puts. 
It's also closed under the 21 EMA. You see the dots right here. This is the closing price. This is the 21 EMA. So it's slightly below, nothing crazy, but also still holding the daily nine. So maybe uh, another good trigger would be to get under the daily nine EMA, which is right with Friday's low. Cause you can see the daily nine right here and you can see Friday's low at 63.60s right here. So if we can get under that, good trigger. If not, if my uh, market wants to gap up Monday and it opens outside the uptrend line, that's a great signal to maybe you know, look at it along right at the open, just because it opened outside the, you know, outside the downtrend line and it could take off, but it just depends. So just make sure you're paying attention to that. Look at the one day time frame. Don't just look at the five or 15 minute. Look at the one day if it looks good and looks like it could go higher or lower uh, based off your triggers. So if it, you know, can open outside of here or open below here, that, that's a good signal for either short if it breaks over here or long if it breaks over the downtrend line. MU, we're focused more on puts just because it's still within the downtrend, but I am willing to stay open-minded to the upside if it gets over downtrend line. And then our last individual name here, we're looking at SMH. So I was actually talking in the Discord earlier. I was talking to some people. I felt like Nvidia has just been way overextended and I don't want to buy puts on it yet either because I know, you know, people can just show up out of nowhere and just, you know, panic buy it and it, you can get squeezed. So you do have to wait for a good signal. Nvidia, I feel like there's not that great of a signal yet, but SMH here, uh, you're getting a, you know, you're getting the whole broad sector covered just in this ETF. This is going to have everything, all the top uh, semiconductor names in this ETF. So if they're all selling or all buying, obviously this is going to go up with it. And what I really like about this one is that it's already retraced 100% of this downtrend. So the downtrend started all the way from 2021 down to 2022 lows in October. And that's what gives you this Fib retracement from high down to low. It's already retraced the whole thing. It had a slight 61.8% rejection, which I've showed on these videos before. 61.8 plays are really nice in downtrends. They make great rejections. It's already broken over that. So it gave a 61.8 breakout, already broke over the 78.6. Uh, didn't even acknowledge this as resistance or anything, but now we've reached the 100% point. So this is you know, a pretty good area to start looking for resistance. Obviously this one week bar is not bearish yet, so you do wanna be careful with that. If we go down to the one day, you can see we do have a slight red bar. It was nothing crazy. You can see it was only down 0.83% on Friday, so nothing crazy. There's a small little gap here. I'm guessing just because semis uh, gapped up a little bit. Uh, AMD sold off really heavy. Uh, even Nvidia sold off really heavy after being up so i'm surprised this didn't fill the whole gap but obviously something held it up just above the gap honestly if it can get into this little gap make a great put scalp and then there's another resistance right here so this actually i'm liking this for a trigger better if it can get under 155.94 we could just round it up to 156 or so so just keep an eye on it at 156 if it can break 156 i feel like that could flush to the downside and that also aligns with this little gap right here. So we'll go ahead and set an alert on this too. We'll just put an alert and we'll name it resistance. So if we can get back under the resistance here, that means this, you know, this level could be back in play and this could be a resistance along with that 100% area that I showed you on the one week time frame. So that'll be our trigger uh, under 156 or 155.94. And then it could enter that gap. Obviously you probably want to look at taking profit on the short term if it reached either the nine EMA on the one day or the 21 EMA on the one day, which is your little combo you have right here. So this is your short term nine, this is your short term 21 with the dots. And the reason for that is because if it does pull back and get under, it could just make a higher low and just keep, you know, keep holding the uptrend. And another thing that could happen here, why well, you don't want to just short just yet, because it could hold up this 155.94, uh, it could back test it and hold it up as support as a classic break, retest, mega base, and then try to go higher. But obviously the 100% area that I showed you on the one week is definitely a factor and it is in the way. So it, if bulls want this to go higher, they would have to take it over that. So we do have that in our favor. If it wants more downside, one thing I don't see yet, I don't see the slow stochastic oscillator here. It's still curling up. There's no crossover yet. So if we can get under 156 and cross over the slow stochastic, I feel good about that. You can see the slow stochastic here cross to the downside, had a nice pullback. And then once it crossed back up, nice little run, cross back down, two day pullback, cross back up, another good run. So this the slow stochastic has been working pretty good for this name. So I would like to see that slow stochastic 
cross down for trying to take puts. Also get under 156. Also maybe enter the gap. So that's for SMH. I'm going to be looking at puts on this. I'm just not willing to buy calls up here on this. I mean, maybe if it was able to break out of the 159.40, obviously it'd probably be like 160 flat. If it breaks over 160 flat and closes over that, uh, semis are definitely going to still be in play. So just keep an eye on that if it can get over that. But otherwise, good risk to reward for puts here, maybe even a short just because we're at this all-time resistance. And it's basically a 52-week high or all-time high for this ETF. So SMH here, looking at puts, just make sure you wait for the right triggers. Same thing as last week. If you don't get the triggers and don't get a good feeling about it, don't take it. So do the same thing we did last week. If, if I don't like any of these shorts or really anything on this list, you know, I'm not going to take it. Other than T, I'm pretty, pretty sure I'm definitely going to buy T for the long term. Doesn't really matter where you buy long term as long as your dollar cost averaging. You can pretty much buy at any price. If you buy once a month, you're gonna build up a nice average, you know, despite where you buy. So T, I'm definitely gonna be looking at shares, most likely gonna buy, you know, indefinitely. Others, you know, these are short term option plays, even you know, a 30 day option is still short term. So even if you're swinging these and buying 30 plus days out, you still do have to be very selective with what you're doing. And you don't want to just, you know, chase puts just because it's at resistance. You want a couple things lining up. And if you're not getting those lineups, just don't take it. All right, next we're going into SPY here. So this one's actually looking a little crazy this week. And the reason for that is because we're pulling into a rally base drop, a big 2022 rally base drop supply zone. Another thing it's pulling into is that 78.6 Fibonacci. And that's from this, you know, 2022 high in January down to October lows in 2022. So it's we can pretty much assume it's retraced 78.6% of its losses already, which is, you know, phenomenal, uh, even with, you know, 5% interest rates and the Fed tightening, it, it doesn't seem to matter. Equities are in its own world. It's still breaking out. Obviously, once it got over 430 and the 61.8, it was pretty much all, you know, you can see there's a couple one week candles that were red but it's still holding higher lows, making higher highs. So that's that's why you want to look at the one week. You want to make sure, you know, you're not just taking a short at the first red bar. And, you know, when the VIX is this low, just stick to scalps if you're going to take puts um, and wait for a reversal signal. And that's not going to be until you take out a one week low. And you can see we never took out a one week low here. We never took out a one week low here. We never took out a one week low here. Never took out a one week low here. So... You just got to pay attention to that. Look for the one week lows to get taken out. Then you can maybe look at puts for a short term trade or a medium term or long term trade. Just depends. But SPY here, I feel like it's going to see some resistance eventually. It may not be after this one week bar just because it's so bullish. We could start getting into consolidation. We have a very quiet week with data. So I'm not really expecting too much this week. But the Fibonacci retracement's there and the supply is there. So naturally, I have to think in this general area, it could reject and maybe try to come back down and test the moving averages or something. It honestly just depends. And obviously, you can't really assume your rejection until you get a nice candle to go with that. And right now, we're just have, you know, we're just at a bullish candle. So I mean, this could go a little bit higher into supply before trying to reject. So you'd have to be careful with that. So now that you've seen the one week, we'll go down to the one day, maybe look at a couple gaps real quick. We do have a gap right here. We get the magnet on. So we got a gap right here. Uh, what is that? 444.90s down to 442.97. So about a, about a $2 gap there. It's pretty decent, nothing crazy. I would say the ATR on SPY is anywhere from like three to four bucks. So $2 is, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's decent. It's not the full ATR or anything, but it's a pretty good gap. So it'd make a good scalp if it can get down into that. We also do have a short-term resistance here right at 443.90. I'm pretty sure we covered 443.90 a couple times last week and I was very skeptical at this level. I felt like it could go a little bit lower down to demand. It did not reach that. So it held the 9 to 21 EMA very good, holding higher lows, ended up breaking out, almost even made a ascending pattern. So an ascending pattern is flat top resistance while it's making higher lows. It builds up like a pressure cooker and then it breaks out like this. So that's what it did exactly. And now uh, we only have one one day bar here that's red. So it's nothing crazy. The red bar didn't even take out the lows of the previous bar. So it's, you know, this could just be a base candle. So you do need to see Friday's lows get taken out. And then once it gets under Friday's lows, 
it needs to take out Thursday's lows of last week. So, and then it kind of goes into this little base candle right here, which could be considered a demand zone actually. Uh, it's a red bearish base candle and it did make a higher high. So we could consider that a demand zone. May not be the prettiest one or the most you know crazy demand zone, but it is a rally. It made a base, made a higher high. So rally, base, rally. So if it does pull back, obviously it would it'd probably pull back into this little little fart of a demand zone here. Uh, if that demand zone obviously broke, you go straight into the gap and 44390, which is previous resistance. So anything above this 44390, I feel like it's still relatively bullish, but you do have to be careful because we do have that one week supply I showed you. So this is kind of your trading range. You got the one week supply and the 78.6 I showed you and this little demand here in 44390. So I would just say 44390, up to 452 or so it's probably going to be your trading range maximum it honestly just depends we'd have to start busting through some of these levels you know for me to feel like the range is going to be any bigger than that we got a really low vix so naturally atrs get pretty tight ranges get really tight uh, with a low vix there's no volatility and that makes the market feel a little bit tighter so we do need to see a little bit more from that otherwise i feel like this week's probably going to be a little bit chill like i said for me to want to take puts on this or scout puts i'd want to see friday's low get taken out same with you know any other names I want to see friday's lows get taken out otherwise i feel like people are just going to keep buying this up if you really wanted to wait for a pullback in this to enter a swing trade, I've been you know, recommending people to keep track of the 9 and 21 EMAs. They obviously work really good. I'm going to show you right here. So you got a cluster holding here of the 9 and 21. You got a cluster here holding of the 9 and 21. You got a nice little bounce here. You got the 9 holding right here. So you want to be adding at the moving averages uh, in an uptrend maybe even buy at demand or support i i don't really don't like breakout trades all that much you can trade them but the risk to reward is not that great obviously if you took this 44390 breakout worked through, worked pretty good for a couple of days but you are getting the best deals when they pull back into the moving averages and you're adding on higher lows and your higher lows are going to be right here you know right here really anywhere where the moving average is trending up you could wait for it to pull back into there and that gives you the best deal so that's for spy guys like i said right at one week supply and just as a demand zone just short of it and a small gap so i really can't put it any lower than 44390 for now and i can't put it any higher probably than 452 because we do have this 78.6 and also the one week supply so this is probably going to be the trading range for now one thing that's pretty good the slow stochastic here the oscillator is still curling up and crossed over positively so uh, that's that's pretty good uh, it could be good for bulls but you know, it just depends. You know, this can change in an instant. So let's see. All right. Next, we're going into QQQ. So you can see the one week here and get rid of the indicators real quick. So on the one week time frame, we do have a little supply zone. So you got a supply zone right here. Actually, it's considered a drop based drop. So you got a big drop candle. It creates a base, makes another drop or lower low. And currently the QQQ is inside that. And this is kind of like a no buy zone for me, even though, you know, this looks pretty bullish it broke over that 371.83 2022 resistance i didn't even pay attention to the supply zone last week because i showed you this set uh, the 371.83 i mentioned that I either need to reject there or get over that in order to go higher and also maybe reject it if it wants to go lower it had a little bit of trouble at this level but overall last week it did break out of that finally but i've been totally ignoring this big base candle from 2022 so this is definitely a supply zone and I personally, even if it broke over this 371.83, if I saw this last week, I definitely wouldn't have traded uh, this breakout over 371.83 just because it's going straight into the supply from 2022. This is a drop based drop supply zone. So it's definitely a chance it could start rejecting about there. One good sign is that it closed inside of it. So it didn't close, you know, with a rejection candle below it. You didn't really see a crazy reaction inside of the supply yet, but it, we are inside of it. And then if it can get over that, obviously, if you can get over 390, that takes you straight, you know, to all time highs, which is 408.71, which is just insane to be saying right now, but it's the truth. So if it can get over that, fine, but this is kind of off limits for me. I just way too risky. Uh, it's already ran up so much. So, you know, take advantage of the quick moves while you can, but. You know, just be really careful here. For the daily time frame, you can see it we're slightly over the 78.6, and that's the retracement I just showed you on the one week. You know, if this supply does end up pulling back, obviously, you know, that could act as support as well. But I'd feel more good about 
371.83 holding up as support than a Fibonacci level just because this is more recent. So, the, you know, this recent resistance could definitely act as support. So we have a peak at 372.85 and then the 2022 resistance at 371.83 that we went over last week. So that cluster of 372.85 to 371.83, that could definitely act as you know, good support. We didn't even remove this Fibonacci level and we'll just have the support and the supply and there's a demand zone down here as well. Uh, if it did pull back, obviously this would likely hold up or at least it would try to. So if it did pull back though, obviously it has to take, you know, it has to take out the lows of Friday, just like with any other stock we've been looking at, we want to see the lows get taken out from Friday in order to have a good signal. You can see it's a little stochastic here. Oscillator is still curling up, so it hasn't crossed back down or anything. So uh, I don't feel super bearish yet. I would need to see a signal of that crossing down to you know feel like it's gonna pull back into support. But at the same time, you know we're inside that big one week supply zone. So this is just a no trade zone for me. If the camera little pivots look fine, you know tomorrow and we're still inside supply, I would still, you know, I'd still be willing to buy, you know, calls at S3 or, you know, maybe look at an R4 breakout, but it just depends. And this big supply zone just makes me sketched out so it might even be wise to you know just stick to individual tickers this week but i just can't seem to stay away from spy and qqq i day trade them all the time and i also you know trade the future so we'll see really no setup here i mean this could just be a base candle and you know, try to hold up structure before trying to go higher that's what the slow stochastics telling us still curled up no cross to the downside but you know still holding over the moving averages and everything i really don't really have a projection on this this week other than just be cautious at supply which we're inside of maximum i could see us down to 372.85 if it pulled back price targets higher i really don't see much higher to be honest uh, i really feel like it can't go too much higher at least on the short term it's probably gonna need a little cool off before you know trying to go higher as usual the best spot if you're really gonna try to go long like i said on spy when we were going over it you want to be adding at the moving averages add at higher lows at the 21 or the 9 on the one day time frame, and it works really good. I mean, you got a bounce right here off the nine and 21. You got a bounce here off the nine. You got a slight bounce here off the nine. Uh, sold off a little bit, but held the 21, bounced, bounced off the nine and 21 again here. So you wanna be adding at those to get the best discount. Like I said, this is not the best discount up here. So not to sound indecisive or sound like I'm wishy washy here. But you do want to wait for it to get down here or at least get down to this 372.85 area. And you can look at longs there. But I mean, at the same time, you know, it's just kind of risky to short up here. So like I said, just wait for the Friday's lows to get taken out. If Friday's low, uh, if we get under that at 378.18, you could definitely look at puts. And even if it held up there short term, if it held Friday's low fine on Monday, you, you know, you could maybe even look at calls still for a scalp. So it just depends, but just make sure you know how to read market sentiment, pay attention to the VIX, uh, the dollar, etc. So really nothing of substance here. Just be cautious inside supply, wait for the Friday's low to get taken out. If you want to buy, make sure Friday's low is either holding or make sure it's at 372.85, which is this previous resistance. And that'd be a good buy zone to look for a bounce. All right, and next we're going into the IWM. So last week, I really didn't have anything for the IWM last week, I don't think. I think we were looking at, so this was Friday's close. So we were mid-range, but in the middle of a demand zone bounce. So I mentioned you wouldn't want to really take you know any puts here or take any calls here you'd want to wait for it to get up to resistance if you want to look at puts and you can see it got up there but it ended up breaking out so puts wouldn't have even worked up here unfortunately so this demand zone pretty much uh, outweighed everything and this is that rally based rally demand zone we covered we actually uh, covered it when it was down here and i said it looked good for a bounce it ran up really nice and then once it got up to resistance I said it looked pretty good for puts, didn't look great for calls just because it's at resistance. Sold off, bounced back into demand again, and then, you know, it did end up holding up Thursday and Friday. But when we were going over the charts last Sunday, uh, this is our Friday close, so we are mid-range. So this is not at demand, and it's also not at resistance. So it just didn't feel like, you know, a great setup. In hindsight, you know, you could have, obviously, because it went higher. It also held your 9 and 21 EMAs, so this Friday's close held the 21 and the nine and it ended up going higher. So it's still holding, you know, an uptrend very cleanly. But once it got up to resistance, just no chance. I mean, it just, it closed over and then gapped up. So that's as, that's about as simple as it gets. If it starts closing over resistance, there's you no know, good chance it could keep going higher. So that's exactly what it did here. 
now there could be an opportunity here so it looks like it filled the gap uh was that from tuesday to wednesday friday it finally filled down it looks like we have the 9 and 21 down here slightly but the most important thing i think is this resistance at 189.24 it's the same resistance that we've been covering the last few weeks also the 38.2 fib that we've been covering the last few weeks that's also kind of a area that maybe this could pull back into very slightly but then try to hold up as a base so we'll have to see but if it can get down here i would maybe look at calls or look at it long if it can get down here and also hold as a base if you see good evidence of it closing over the resistance acting as new support that's a good long signal maybe if you can even get like a candle like this or get a candle like this something full body maybe a lower shadow wick showing that there's buy pressure like right here something showing you that it's reacting to the line and that's what you want to be looking for on supply and demand zones and also just regular uh, support you want to see those lower shadow wicks you want to see a nice reversal candle something giving you some evidence right and you want to see that at the closing bell so you want to see a nice close with these one day bars that's how you get a good reading and that's how you go into the next day with a game plan or go into the new week with a game plan like we do here on sunday we go over the one day time frames and the one week time frames those are the best they work the best if you're trying to write out a plan so another piece of evidence i have here that it could pull back just a little bit you can see the slow stochastic here pulling back as well as the banks just got absolutely clobbered on friday there's a couple that released earnings i think citigroup and maybe like Wells Fargo or something, they they both, I mean, just sold off into hell. So they got obliterated, especially Citigroup. I mean, it was up and then it filled the gap down and then went down 4% after that. So, I mean, the, the one day bar on Citigroup is just outrageous. It's just a huge outside bar that took out everything. So that could be the reason why we're seeing that pressure. Uh, you can see it's down 1% for IWM because of the financial sector. So slow stochastic oscillator curling down just a tad you got banks down as well so like i said if i can pull back into this little area maybe look for a long off this area or off just the regular 9 and 21 email keep trying to ride it while still giving you a chance but you know you don't just have to trade breakouts guys i mean you can wait for it to dip a little bit and you could look for a discount there that's what i like to do i don't really like trading breakouts in this market too much i like to add at the discounts it just makes more sense to me it's better risk to reward and you can keep your, you know, your, your risk is just so much easier to manage than if you were to chase a breakout and then it dumps like this, what are you gonna do? Uh, you just get way more cushion if you, you know, buying low and it gets a little bit oversold, people are gonna try to, you know, magically bid that back up and institutions see it's cheap and they'll try to bid it back up, bring it back over support, make sure it's holding support, etc. So that's for the IWM guys. Like I said, it could just pull back just a tad and then try to hold up about 189.20 s or just off the moving averages right there and you could try to add about there but still an uptrend so i mean it, it looks pretty good but like i said the the best the best discount area is going to be from 189.24 down to 187.63 in that area all right and next we're going into the vix my least favorite part of the videos that i made just because i hate this indicator lately it just when it looks like it's about to get interesting it sells back off so we've been focused on this 1553 obviously it probably sound like a parrot if you watch these every week i talk about this every week so 1553 is obviously our level of focus it opened over that a couple of times actually it looks like on friday it opened over and also opened over on monday uh we opened at 1608 so it it opened above the level but what I say every week is that it doesn't matter about the open, doesn't matter about you know anything else except for the close. You want to see the close over these levels, otherwise it's just not going to matter that much. And you can see we opened over 16, but closed under 15.53. So that's why I kept going lower. So we do need to see it getting over that in order for it to go higher. Otherwise, it's a lost cause. But VIX is in a little bit of a better situation than if is if you're looking over here we're now getting into supports so we have a little bounce area right here little bounce area right here so i'd say from 13 to you know 1270s or so that's probably a good area that could curl back up it honestly just depends though right now slow stochastic is crossed down so i need to see the vix kind of curl back up and see a positive crossover for me to feel like it's going to go back up I would really use the slow stochastic as a short-term gauge and right now it's crossed below so 
You need to see a curl back up, but we are coming into supports here. Uh, it's also trending, trending under the moving averages. So you got your 21 here with the dots, like I showed you before and the nine EMA and you can see it respects it pretty good. You know, once it got over, uh, right here, well, actually it closed slightly under, but once it got over, uh, there's a big, big pop once it got over the 21. So if it can get over 21 again, uh, it could pop back up, but right now it's trending below both. And you can see what happens when it trends below both lower high, lower highs, lower lows. Uh, just make sure 13 is holding. If you really want to see, you know, the market go lower and finally pull back after the bulls have been eating all this time, you want to see the market go down. You need to see 13 holding and you see 12, seven, uh, 1273 holding uh, if you want to see market go higher scream higher which it very well could because you got you know vix at 13 again you got dollar below 100 which will go over next you'd obviously need to get under 1273 and you know that could take you a little bit lower and then it looks like i have a dotted level at 1142 that's probably the next support below that so i'm guessing that 1142 dotted area is probably from you know probably from 2020 or 2019 or 2018 or something because I had nothing for 2021 except for these two at 1410 and 1473, and we're below those now. So I'm guessing that this uh, 1142 is probably from a year even even before 2021. So we're at you know multi-year lows here on the VIX. So I try to look for other levels that it can maybe react to. But right now we do have a local 1273 and 13 area as support. So, and then, you know, above that is just our usual levels we've been covering every single week. But like I said, let the slow stochastic or, you know, let the MACD or some type of trend indicator, you know, kind of gauge you for the short term because uh, the VIX respects it pretty well. And also your moving average is short term. Uh, we're trending below both. And also you got a negative slow stochastic. So, I mean, uh, it looks like it could keep going lower here, but you know, we do have a little bit of support here. So as long as that's holding, you know, there's still hope that it could go back up. But otherwise, not too much on this. You can maybe look at VIX calls. You know, I got bailed out of my VIX calls. I had some VIX calls that were down, you know, 50, 60 percent or something. Uh, 17 calls for July and it literally went up to 17, you know, 09 or something. So I got bailed out uh, with a 10% gain. So I got really lucky on those. VIX options are really tough to trade, but what you could do is go a couple months out, maybe go at the money or in the money to make it a little bit easier. Cause if you go too far out of the money, even if the VIX goes up, they, they might not pay you. So you gotta be really careful, but that's for the VIX. Just make sure this level is holding. Otherwise, I'm still waiting for, you know, our important levels to get broke over. All right, next we're going into the DXY, which just absolutely got smashed. So it just smashed below the levels we covered last week. Uh, I'm pretty sure I mentioned as long as it's under 103 and staying under 103 is a good chance. They probably flushed this 102.06. It did that. So it looks like Friday uh, stayed under 103. So we ended up staying, uh, staying under 103 on Monday. And then it ran straight down into the 102 that we were looking at. But once that closed under, it was just a free fall flush into 182, which is this base right here. So you can see the technicals is really good on this. Uh, you got a you know close or two under the 102 here that we were looking at last week and a straight flush. And that was a good, probably a good bullish signal for the market. And like I said, the last couple of weeks, currencies are extremely sensitive to data. So once we had the most important data basically of the month. Obviously the dollar and the bonds and any other macro indicators are going to react very sensitively and way more than uh, it normally would. So, you know, the DXY and the bonds are not gonna move like equities all the time. Uh, and sometimes it takes events and actual macro data to move them. But now, so we're under the 182. This is the support, the main support I had. And I felt pretty good about, you know, market keep going higher uh, once it got under 182. But now I'm a little skeptic because, like I said, I showed you on SPY, we're pulling into that supply. We're actually inside a supply on QQQ. So two one-week supplies on SPY and QQQ that we're right at. Also, we've retraced, I mean, so much already. We need a short-term pullback or some type of correction, you know, uh, maybe you could load up once, it, you know, you get the dip because... This con you know this continuous breakout on the markets is just hard to buy. I mean, why would you want to chase the highs or chase the top? You want to add the discounts, and that's what I wait for. That's what I try to add at. I try to add at demand. I try to add at the moving averages. I don't try to add the breakouts. So if you're a breakout trader, great for you. It's been working pretty good. But you can see DXY here. So this is actually 
a 2022 demand zone. So this is all the way from March 2022. It's a rally base rally zone. Uh, maximum, I could put the dollar down to that and then probably try to curl up about there and then maybe run back up to 182 and back test that. But it honestly just depends. This one week bar is pretty bearish. So, but if you look on the one day, like we were looking at before, obviously, I mean, it's pretty oversold. It's, it's, just brutal i mean there's like five candles down so it might have a dead cat bounce and try to bounce back up and that you know could spook the market on the short term you know intraday or something but i don't think it's going to do much we need a much larger move maybe back over 182 to actually spook the market so i was able to reclaim that level obviously i'd feel pretty good about the market pulling back you know for right now i feel like it could still go a little bit lower right into this demand zone and try to curl up about there so that's my expectation you know that could or could or could not hit but another good thing uh for the bulls if you're bullish on the dollar we actually have this slow stochastic here curling up so uh this is actually a positive curl up you can see the purple over the orange that means it's curling back up and it had a really gnarly curl down here so this could be a you know a little dead cat bounce or short-term bottom for now on the dollar just because it's got so oversold uh the demand zone's at like 99.15 or so so you know really not too much lower if it did pull back into the demand zone and probably try to curl up about there but uh you do have a good sign uh that it's starting to curl up here on the stochastic so we'll see but that's really all i got for the dollar right now uh i mean you got cushion on this demand zone so if it, if it did fall i really wouldn't expect it to go much lower just to this demand zone and that's about it but that'd be good you know uh, short term for the bulls if it, it can continue lower go into this demand obviously the market can keep going a little bit higher but you know if it does want a dead cat here dead cat bounce up back into 182 back test the support as new resistance obviously market could could pull back a little bit but you need the vix to move with it as well which i've been explaining in my videos the last few weeks so i love you guys make sure you like comment and subscribe to our extras youtube channel i'm going to get this chopped up edited and sent out uh, it's a little bit late so i want to get this out asap love you guys and i'm out